Hi, and welcome to Past the Pavement. Today we're at North Fort Campground in the Sawtooth National Recreation Area, about 10 miles north of Ketchum in central Idaho. And I've got to say, this is some of the most stunning scenery we've ever come across. We're used to the Uintas coming from Utah, but this is just as beautiful and slightly different, and I can't believe that we haven't come here previously. We're already making plans to come back and highly recommend you make plans to travel here and explore it for yourselves as well. This is our first multi-day excursion with the Patriot Camper and we are so excited. We are here for five nights for a final shakedown to work out any remaining kinks before our first dispersed camping trip coming up in a few weeks. And it's nice to have an established campground as a backup just in case things go sideways. We've previously done two overnight trips in the X3 closer to home to become familiar with the basics, but this trip will really test our readiness to be comfortable for hopefully up to a week in some of the more remote areas we visit. We want to share some of the things we've learned, challenges, and other initial impressions of our Patriot Campers X3. Check the description below for links to resources mentioned, and huge thanks to Channel Traveling 2, whose tips have helped immensely. Okay, so... I am absolutely obsessed with this kitchen on the Patriot Camper. I was a little nervous that for a five day trip, we would not have enough storage space, but I didn't have to skimp at all in my meal planning. We still have tons of snacks, everything is good to go. So I'm really loving this great counter space. I've always enjoyed cooking outside when camping, even if we've been in a different type of trailer. My only complaint about this kitchen setup is this stove. Now, this is a Eureka stove. It came with the camper and we have not had good luck using it. It's really hard to get a consistent temperature. It does not heat your skillet. Uh, your cast iron skillet doesn't heat it evenly. So we're coming out with like Food that is half cooked, half not. Also, we've noticed if we try to use both burners at the same time, one of the burners will just go out randomly. So we've been struggling with this and we got an idea from the Traveling Choose YouTube channel to swap this out for a 12 volt oven, which I'm actually really excited about. So it'll be great, we'll have an oven and then we're going to use our Jet Boil Genesis, which we've been using for a few years now camping and we love its consistency. It packs up really nicely and we've literally had no issues with it. In fact, <laughs> I honestly prefer it over my stove top at home. Another plus of this kitchen is how easy it is to just stow it away when you leave camp. So we like to go off and go on adventures um, and we are in bear country. So we can't just leave this pantry full of food for any old bear to walk up and take. So I do love that you can just pop this back in, lift up this door, it locks real tight and we don't have to worry about any of our food. Another thing that we love and have been really impressed with our camper is the amount of storage that we have and how easily accessible it is at all times. So this is the pull out storage. It's just one of the many storage drawers. We love this one because you can pack it up while the camper is all the way closed and then you can also access it from the inside which makes it really convenient if there's a game or something that you want to grab while you are hanging out inside the camper and you don't want to have to come out to get that. You do want to add some more storage bins and kind of figure out the best way to keep it organized and utilize it the very best way. So we are working on that and we will keep you guys updated on any cool solutions that we find. But we love this. There is many other little cubbies all around the outside. There's a wet storage as well. And on the inside, we thought there was gonna be a lot less than what it is. We can fit so much. So we do have the coffee lift. We aren't going to be using that as a coffee lift. I think we'll uninstall that and actually just have a storage area um, because we like making our coffee outside in the morning. And then under the bench, we have extra storage areas for like blankets or our chairs. And then also, like I said, we can access that big storage drawer underneath the bench right here inside of the camper. Another really useful area of storage are these, we call them our little personal drawers. 
where we can store whatever we want. For me personally, I actually like to keep like my dirty clothes in there or my toiletries, things like that tucked away. We've also utilized these Step 22 Hedgehog toiletry bags. They have been absolutely amazing. I am so impressed with the quality, how much I can fit into them, and then I love that it has the hook. The hook has been so perfect for us that we don't have to move it around when we're trying to maneuver around our little cabin. We can just have it hooked and it's there whenever we need it. One thing we weren't quite sure about was the uh, built-in barbecue in the man cave. And uh, so we actually have the dealer remove it because I thought it was just going to take up too much space. And uh, it's a little bit awkward also if you don't pull it out just the exact right way then the control knob ended up hitting the strut on the side here, which I didn't really like. And then also it would kind of like rub up against the Wabasto heater. I am thinking about putting one in though, because it would be really nice. And as we've mentioned, we haven't had the problem with space like we thought we would. And so we don't really need it to, you know, store items and, and other stuff like that. So I think that may be addition we may be adding in the future. The other thing in the man cave is the Wabasto heater. It does the hot water as well as heat for the cabin. And I'd say this is probably one of the things that we've been most disappointed in so far. I'm reserving full judgment until we kind of work out some kinks here, but so far it's been disappointing. The hot water works fine, but the heater is almost non-existent. Our stop cap, since we haven't been able to use the heater successfully, is using our Mr. Buddy heater which is definitely not ideal. It's a little bit scary and dangerous, but we've been extremely careful with, you know, how we've positioned it, make sure that nothing is in the way, and there's no chance of it tipping over or anything like that. That's really just a temporary solution until we figure out how to get the Wabasto to work correctly or another, you know, solution. The verdict's still out on this. Since this is our longest trip and we're not at a site with hookups, we're closely monitoring our power use. We've had our Dometic fridge powered the entire time and haven't really spared using the water pump or the lighting system. However, we have definitely used the inverter sparingly and really only to grind coffee every morning as well as we used an immersion blender for I think two of our dinners. And what I've learned is the inverter uses about 1.5 amps or around 18 to 20 watts just being on in standby and so we definitely try to turn it on you know right before we use it and then turn it off immediately afterwards because otherwise it's just like a parasitic drain on the battery. On our two overnight trips we didn't hate the mattress but we could also see that it might start to get uncomfortable after a few nights. We got a memory foam topper from Costco and then cut it to size to fit the Patriot mattress since it's not a full queen. It's been really comfortable and we're glad we did it, although you can definitely feel it while opening the X3 up. We hope you have enjoyed our first impressions of the Patriot X3. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. We would love to hear from you. And as always, we hope to see you past the pavement too.